Hello and welcome to this Trade Radiators video. Today we're going to show you how we're going to replace this radiator here and put a longer radiator under the window just over here. The problem with this radiator is it's too small for the room and therefore has too little British Thermal Units or BTUs going into the room and heating it up. So we're going to take this radiator off here and put a nice longer radiator under the centre of this window. The reason we try and put radiators under windows is because they don't have a great thermal efficiency and therefore as the cold air comes in, the radiator under the window will warm that air as it comes into the room. Before we begin, make sure that you've turned off the heating system and it's all drained down. Make sure you take the magnetic cat off the radiator. Make sure all the radiator valves are open and then we can remove this old radiator here. Let's get started. Right, so now we've removed the old radiator and we've capped off one of the pipes going to the return of that radiator. The flow pipe we're going to use again for our new radiator when we hang it up over here. We've also got our floorboards up and exposed all the pipes that we need to work on. Now the next thing we need to do is actually hang the radiator on the wall. So we're going to go in the other room, unpack the radiator and start getting our measurements. Before you fully unpack the radiator, make sure that you check for damage. Also, make sure that you find the two brackets, or three brackets if it's a big radiator, and pop them to one side. And also, the small box that contains the grommets and the inserts for the radiator. You'll notice that on the box it says Quinn Radiators because they are the manufacturer of this particular radiator. Undo the box at the end. You've got instructions here. You've got your, your air bleed insert and your blanking plug insert. And also grommets that go on to the radiator bracket. We're going to have our radiator standing off the wall the smallest distance and so we're going to pop our grommets on here. All they do is prevent the radiator from clicking when it heats up and making noise as it rubs on these metal brackets. Remove the travel plug and pop in your insert. You'll notice there's a rubber wash around there so it shouldn't require any sealant. Give that a quick nip up. Do the same at the other end and pop your air bleed in. It's worth remembering that you should always pop your air bleed at the end of the radiator that you know you'll be able to get at once it's installed on the wall. You don't want to install it up really tight to another wall, otherwise you'll never be able to get to the bleed to actually bleed the radiator down, or it'll be really difficult. Another thing worth noting is, is you can take this top grill off here and take this side grill off here and actually turn the radiator the other way up to make it a round top radiator so it can be converted to two different types of radiator. Right, now we've prepared the radiator for going in, all we need to do is think about where our brackets are going to be. The first thing I always do is measure the distance between the centre of each of the brackets. On this radiator it is 108 centimetres. Now the next thing you do is you mock up the bracket actually hanging on the radiator and measure the bottom of the bracket to the bottom of the radiator itself. That is 11 centimetres. Now the next thing we do is we actually measure the width of the window itself, divide that by two and that will give us a centre. Make a tiny mark in pencil. Now we run a straight line using our spirit level down the wall. Now we want to determine what height we want the radiator at. Now the radiator we're putting in here is a 400 high radiator and I want the top of my radiator to be just below our window sill. So at the bottom of the radiator is here, 400. So I'll make a mark here at the bottom and then all I need to do is measure up 11 centimetres. As we said earlier is the distance between the bottom of the radiator and the bottom of the bracket just make a small mark there. Now we know the width between our brackets is 108, so 108 divided by 2 is 54, so I'll just make a little mark here, run this back that way, make a little mark here, I'm going to use our spirit level to run out a straight line to both of our marks. So we've got our spirit level horizontal here, that we know is horizontal, we've got our mark here, all we then do is we pop a small spirit level on here, so we know that our vertical is vertical. We'll run a little line up here, and a small line up here. Now you should have a marking on your wall that looks something like this. The next thing we do is, with each mark, we put our bracket on the bottom of the line, so it's along the bottom here, and then we put the side of our bracket, the side that we know is the centre of the radiator, along this line here. Mark all the holes on each bracket, and do that at each end. Get yourself the right size bit. And just firstly drill 
your slotted hole. Do that to both ends. It's a good time now, just put your spirit level on and make sure you're level. Then put on your remaining screws and plugs. Now you grab your radiator and pop that on bottom first. Push it up. Get that hole in the brackets. Now your radiator can slide from side to side, so now's a good time to just measure it out. Just make sure that your radiator is central. So there we go, we've now got the radiator in position. We're going to now know exactly where our pipes need to come up through the floor and we're ready to put our TRV and lock shield on and do our pipe work. Remove your TRV and put PTFE on this thread. The more the merrier. PTFE is cheap and leaks are expensive. And wind that into the rad. Now we can lightly and loosely just pop our valve on here. Make sure that the TRV you get has the two arrow sign on it. That means it's universal and can go on either end of the radiator regardless of the flow or return. And do that with the lock shield at the other end. Right, so we've now got our radiator hung on the wall and we've got our valves in so we know exactly where we can bring our pipes up. I'm going to pipe this radiator up now and you can watch from the comfort of your computer as we go on and do it. Make sure you tighten up all your nuts up and everything and make sure that all your solder fittings have been done. But before you put the floorboards down, make sure that you've got no leaks by filling up the system and pressure testing and making sure that everything's fine there. After you've done that, you can pop your floorboards down, your underlay and your carpet or whatever you had on the floor beforehand. So there you go, you've seen how to remove an old radiator, reposition a new one with the centre off the window, how to mark out your brackets and also how to drill and screw them to the wall. You've also seen quickly how one might pipe up one of these radiators if the pipe work was in that particular position. I hope you've enjoyed our video, if you need any more help or any more information please visit our website at traderadiators.com. Now I think I've forgotten one thing though. There we go, job done.